Hi, my name is Denise DeAngelis, and I'm going to be sharing with you the mess of modes. Why are modes such a mess? I'd like to present my research to you in finding out that this is due to the misnaming of modes, the controversial additions to modes, and the renumbering of modes. Modes originated in ancient Greece, but the church modes that we know them as developed in the 9th century due to theories developed with mathematical intervals by Pythagoras around 580 BC. These intervals were found by Pythagoras plucking on a string at different lengths. Lengths of a one-to-one -one ratio created a sound of a unison, two to one for an octave, two to three for a perfect fifth, and three to four for a perfect fourth. When you subtract the perfect fifth and the perfect fourth, you get a whole step interval with a nine eighths ratio. Modes are built on these intervals. Modes are based on a finalis or final note. The authentic modes are built with a perfect fifth and then stacked with a perfect fourth. The authentic modes are the Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, and Mixolydian. Each of these modes has a related plagal mode. They are built in the reverse way, starting with a perfect fourth below the finalis and then a perfect fifth. They are called the Hypodorian, Hypophrygian, Hypolydian, and Hypomixolydian. You can see the underlying note that is the finalis note in the diagram. So far, everything seems logical and mathematical and makes sense. So why are we so confused about modes? There is a serious bit of name confusion happening. The original names are from the original Greek scales. However, no one knows the exact connection between which notes were in the original Greek scales and which name scale they belong to. The work of Aristotle was 850 years before the philosopher Bothius began actually putting together this information to share with us today. To further add to the confusion, in the early 1500s, Heinrich Glarian made four additional modes, the Aeolian and the Hypoaeolian with a finalis on A, and the Ionian and the Hypo-Ionian with a finalis on C. This was very controversial at the time due to making any additions to what the church believed to be the proper forms for music. Galerian went to great lengths to prove his new theories to the church so that he would not be in trouble with them. The confusion continues in the 1500s when Giuseppe Zarlino decided to renumber the modes. He renumbered them starting with the finalis on C. So now the Ionian was the new first mode. Not everyone took to his new ideas. Therefore, multiple theories were coexisting. In this graphic, you can see that from the time when there were eight modes to having 12 modes by Glarian, to 12 modes renumbered by Zerlino, and other ideas after that, some of the mode ideas overlapped with different theorists and different philosophers sharing ideas at the same time. Eventually, things came together to create the major and minor keys we know today. This is due to the work of Marc-Antoine Charpentier, a French composer, and Christopher Simpson, an English musician and composer. Even though there was so much confusion, many modern composers and musicians still use musical modes today. The following are a few examples of some modes that are used in pop music and in instrumental music. In conclusion, I hope this has been helpful so that if you have ever felt confused about modes, now you know why. 
you are not the only one to feel confused. Even the famous philosophers and composers had different ideas about modes. Due to the misnaming of modes through time, controversial additions, and renumbering. I hope you are able to better understand a little bit about modes, even if we still don't understand them completely.